Hi, my name's John Mylicky. I'm the sales manager for Tucker Snowcat Corporation. We would like to provide our customers with some summer service tips. I would now like to introduce our service manager, Sterling Mathis. Thank you, John. Hello. In this uh, video, we'd like to go over our Tier 3 cat. Uh, in our first video, we went over the Tier 4, uh, which basically has a, a, a different filter package, a different e emissions package, and a different intake package. Uh, tier 3 uh, cat, we made these for several years, so we have uh, literally hundreds of these machines out here. Um, and basically, you know, in for a service, we're trying to look at, uh, you know, preventative maintenance, things that we can catch uh, and see, uh, catch them before they break. Uh, and before they're completely worn out to eliminate downtime. Uh, this cat here is an 09. It's basically been in here uh, every year since it was new and, and I, I think that really has helped contribute to uh, no downtime for this operator. Uh, when the cats come in, you know, we do a great walk around visual inspection. Um, I will generally start with the blade section of it uh, and, and from the blade we can really grab that guy and kind of give him a good shake, uh, see if uh, anything's too loose, if any of your ears are bent on that. And um, again, you can look at your uh, hydraulic cylinders, make sure all your mounting pins and hardware are, are in good shape. Uh, we can look at the hoses. You know, we do a good job of spiral wrapping and isolating all the hoses. But from time to time, you will get some uh, hose on metal uh, contact. And over time, that can give you a little wear spot. So. Something as simple as a zip tie, uh, you know, can isolate that and keep that from wearing anymore. Uh, next big thing we like to focus on as I'm working my way back is a nice visual of our, our tracks and road wheels. And, you know, a tra trained eye uh, can see a lot here. You can look at your drive sprocket, uh, look for your leading edge wear or your back edge wear. Um, this can, can kind of tell you a lot of uh, whether this cat's been ran in, in dry conditions or if they've actually been fortunate enough to have some snow. Um, again, you can look at all your wheels, looking for any excessive wear on the inside or outside. Um, you know, I will generally uh, jack the cat up, grab this carrier, try to rock it back and forth, uh, make sure we don't have any excessive play in the carriers. Uh, good idea to look on the back side of the wheel, make sure none of the sills have been pushed out from over greasing. And you can really, you know, give a good visual of each track, uh, each carrier, each set of wheels, and, and that can kind of give you a good idea of where you're at on that. Uh, from there, I try to look at my slider block clamps, uh, kind of looking at your gap between the frame and the clamp. Uh, it's typical to see a little bit of bow on that, uh, not a big uh, issue of concern is when it would become a problem would be if your uh, poly block has worn a big groove in your plate over an extended amount of time and then that gap between the slider block and the frame gets to where you really don't have much of a, cl uh, a gap. So we can come in there and put some hardened metal in there to raise that back up and, and you know keep that going without having to put a new fifth wheel plate in it. Uh, next I kind of move back to my swing arm and my steering cylinder section. In here we have a, a few components that are metal on metal and, and just due to the nature of what they are, they, they will have some wear. Uh, good part to check is you, you can grab your steering wheel with the cat running, move that wheel back and forth and make sure there's not a lot of movement on that rod without it actuating the, the steering swing. Um, again, a pin here and a steering clevis and also at the butt end of that cylinder. Those are all metal on metal connections. so. Uh, you know, over time they could get oblonged. Um, another good thing to keep your eye on are your tie rod ends and your boots on the tie rods themselves. Make sure that they're not split and you keep them greased. You can also look here and see your front and rear differentials. Make sure your pinion sill is not leaking. Uh, shake those U joints up and down. Make sure we don't have excessive play in there. And really uh, try to look at all the welds on the cat, uh, especially on this side of the frame because this steering cylinder with these wide tracks you do get a lot of stress in here so you're always looking at all your welds uh, making sure we're structurally sound and um, you know from there kind of go back obviously looking to see that we see no drips underneath the cat um, from here we, we get into the engine compartment 
On our tier threes, on the passenger side, uh, near the radiator shroud, there's going to be a placard, as there is with our tier fours. Uh, on the tier three, it's going to tell you um, lubrication spots, uh, types of fluids, and an, a basic amount, uh, you know, general amount and type of fluid that goes in each compartment. Uh, I like to get in here and not only look at all of my uh, intake hoses, but go ahead and get my hands on them and, and fill them and make sure that there's not a, you know, anything loose in there. Um, we like to change our, our coolant every two years. Recommend keeping your diesel tank full in the off season so that we don't get excessive moisture in there. And another thing I found is, you know, a lot of these cats have uh, toolboxes on the rear deck. And, and while that's perfectly fine, uh, fine uh, one thing we would recommend would be that you don't have your toolbox on there. You know, load it with two, three, four hundred pounds of gear and let that stay on there um, over the whole summer. Just take a few minutes, unload it, get some of the weight off of that. Uh, it'll help the cat out uh, over the long time. And... Um, I think that's about it for this video. Thank you.